Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My love, I pray I'm coming in loud and clear. Uh, hopefully this will upload. Uh, I want to give you some uh, words of encouragement. Um, I'm going to talk about the rapture a little bit and the blessed hope that we have in Jesus. I don't know uh, how long um, I'm going to be able to speak for or with my son taking a nap, but, um, you know, our blessed hope uh, uh, is is the, the rapture. And there are many uh, pastors and leaders that uh, speak, you know, uh, and they mean well. Uh, they're not uh, necessarily wrong. Um, but they say, well, Jesus could come, you know, at any moment, you know. And uh, that's true to an extent, but... The Lord has revealed some things to me uh, regarding the mystery of the rapture. And, and a lot of things that have yet to take place in the body of Christ before He will come back. And one of those things is unity. Now, you know, you talk to people about the rapture and they'll say, well... It's not in the Bible, you know, the word rapture is not in the Bible, but the word, the, the word harpazo is, which is the catching away. Now there is the, the Lord coming for his saints, and then the marriage supper of the Lamb, where we're, in, we're going to be in heaven for a lot of theologians, they believe seven years. It's really going to be about three and a half years, but we're going to be in heaven right? And things are going to be unfolding here on the earth. The wrath of God is going to be poured out. We're in the tribulation right now, but there's going to be a great tribulation, right? And, and the great tribulation is where the Antichrist is going to set up his temporary kingdom, right? We know that, that the devil, he is the little G-O-D of this world. He's the God of this world. He's the prince and power of the air. But what has to take place in order for him to set up his kingdom, right? His temporary kingdom. Well, he's got to battle me. And I say this with all humility, uh, uh, you know, people, when they hear my videos on Facebook or hear YouTube Apostle Stephen Drake, they might think, man, you know, this guy's full of pride. You know, uh, he's full of himself. It's, it's, it's not that, my friend. I know my authority in Christ Jesus. I know what he's called me and equipped me to do. And I don't have to, you know, uh, butt heads with people uh, in the church. You know, I'm really over that. You know, I, I've, I've gone to pastors and leaders and I've shared with them the call and the mandate all my life and a lot of them they just don't they don't receive me they don't they don't believe me uh and it's not going to stop God uh from fulfilling his purposes uh in my life in his purposes in your life and, and my friend I'm here to tell you today that if you have felt like you've been uh rejected by man rejected by the church. Don't get discouraged. You just continue to look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. Right? And, you know, the, the part of, of growing into perfection in the completeness of Christ is uh, turning, turning men and women over to the Lord to deal with. Because the way the scripture teaches, right, is if you come in the name of the Lord and if your heart's right and you are, are doing and fulfilling the purpose of God in your life, my friend, if they don't receive you, they're, not, they're actually rejecting Jesus. And uh, this is a hard concept that the body of Christ needs to come into. I mean, the sad reality is, is that we have uh, 
pastors and leaders that are in our pulpits and and they're actually enemies to the cross of Christ. You know, they they've turned it into a one man show and uh it's all about, look at me, look at me. I, I, I'm the pastor. You know, I'm the leader. And, uh, you know, I got news for them. It's not about them. It's about the body of Christ coming into the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And it's for the unity of our faith. This is why Jesus Christ has appointed some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And really, Jesus Christ... And the Apostle Paul, the disciples, uh, they, they never, uh, if they would have known, you know, exactly how man was going to take the, the picture of the revelation, the, the revelation of the church was given to the Apostle Paul. That was a mystery. And it's, it's not a building. It's the called out ones, the ecclesia, the called out ones. So it is about the kingdom of God unfolding here on the earth. And nothing is going to stop the kingdom of God from being ushered in. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the will of God. And so nothing's going to stop that. So I don't have to... Get frustrated, you know, and, and really, uh, though the Lord has called me for a specific time and see for such a time as this, if I at any point stop looking to Jesus, well, the Holy Spirit will leave. You know, you can quench and grieve the Holy Spirit in your life. And when the Holy Spirit leaves you, he doesn't leave a note. You know, and, and many, many, many pastors and leaders out there, they're, they're, they're not operating in the fullness of Christ. And the Holy Spirit left them a long time ago. But he never left a note. So, so, so they don't realize, you know, and, and it's all about our faith and us growing in to the fullness of Christ. So I'm going to read a couple of scriptures uh, uh, to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse uh, 51, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, not only was the church a mystery, right? But the rapture of the church is a mystery that's going to be, it's going to unfold in these last days. And through my ministry, right, there is going to be a call in these last days that's going out through these videos my YouTube, my Facebook, my Instagram, uh, TikTok, and Rumble, Elijah4031. I mean, I'm here to gather the saints. I'm here to, um, you know, lay hands on the sick, just like you are, and they'll recover. Cast out demons, speak in other tongues, and release the freedom of the Holy Spirit in that's given to me by the Lord Jesus Christ into your life so that when we're perfected in Him, right, we can all say, except for the grace of God. It's all about the grace of God. And let me tell you something. You can't out -sin the grace of God. The grace of God will swallow up your sin. And so that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to preach the grace of God and and help unfold a little bit of the mystery that's in the Bible. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. You know, I, 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 you you read, you watch uh, on the news, and you you can hear what's going on with CERN, and a lot of the world today, they they want to figure out a way to be immortal and live forever. Well, that that gift has already been given. 
by the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? We never die. We never die. I mean, people, you know, the, a part of the reason they don't understand the mystery of the Bible is they are looking with natural eyes. Even many believers, they look in the Scripture with natural eyes. You can't do that. You have to have revelation of the Holy Spirit of God to give you insight. My friend, in one verse of Scripture, there are seven revelations. You say, well, where do you come up with that? Well, Isaiah 11. All right? We are to learn the Spirit of the Lord. Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. It says that the Spirit of the Lord, right? There's seven spirits of the Lord. And they're all given to us through revelation of the Holy Scripture. Right? So you have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, the Spirit of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. You see, and, and, and much of the church has lost the fear of the Lord. We're not walking softly before Him. And we have made it about programs, fog machines, skinny jeans, and, and the Lord's tired of it. You know, and we've made it about a religion and a performance. There's nothing that I can do to perform on the level that's going to make God look down from heaven because I give, or because I'm a pastor or a leader, or because, you know, I do all these great works. That doesn't make God look down from heaven and be happy with me. The only way that the Lord looks down from heaven, and first of all, when He sees me, He sees Jesus. He sees Jesus because my profession of faith. And I don't, I don't just profess Him, I possess Him. He possesses me. And so it's, it's by this, by receiving Jesus Christ into your heart and life, that you're going to be immortal. You'll never die. You know, and, and, and part of my ministry, you know, is people are going to see uh, me die. And I don't have any qualms with that. The Lord has showed me my death. The Lord has showed me, you know, uh, me getting captured by the Antichrist. I, I, I'm not, and I'm not going to go into big, huge detail about it, but people are going to see me on a worldwide level die. But I never die. And, 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 you know, you tell people that, and they're just like, oh, you're looking with natural eyes, my friend. Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. And because I possess him, and he possesses me, there will, no, the, no plague will come near my dwelling. There's a Psalm 91 promise. When you read Psalm 91, do you see yourself? You know, in Psalm 91, verse 11, I believe, was where, where Satan came to Jesus in the wilderness and he said, throw yourself off the, off the pinnacle of his temple and your angels will give charge over you. Well, David wrote that. David wrote Psalm 91. But it was about Jesus. But it was also about me. It's also about you. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So you've got to ask yourself the question, are you, are you abiding under the shadow of the Almighty? And if you are, well then no man can curse you. No demon or devil can curse you because you're blessed. You're blessed to live a holy life, to be immortal. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You see, my friend, death is an enemy. It was never the will of God for man to die. And the Holy Spirit, who is the parakletos, leads us into all, all truth. The parakletos in the Greek means he comes alongside. 
But if you study it further, right, the para is is cancel, you know, Kletos is the curse. He's canceled the curse. He's redeemed us from the curse. So though this world is fallen, right, and I live in a physical body, my spirit is made alive by Christ Jesus. See, Romans 8.10 says that if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So, and it goes on further to talk about how by us mortifying or killing the deeds of the body, of the flesh, that the Spirit of God will quicken our mortal bodies in Romans 8. Now, many people, they'll mistranslate that and say, well, that's for an, a later time, you know, when we get our new heavenly body. No, it's now. It's now. By partaking in the blood and body of the Lord Jesus Christ by communion, you know, sickness may try to come along and attach itself to me, but it has no ability to cling to me. You know, you may get sick for 24 hours, or some people, you might get sick for a week. It can't stay because you're not under the curse. You're under grace. You're under grace, my friend. And if you're discerning the, bl the blood and the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to live a supernatural life to where even death is going to be swallowed up in victory. It says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. You see, I wouldn't have known sin if it wasn't for the law, if it wasn't for the Ten Commandments. But see, the Holy Spirit is far superior to the law. And many Christians, they don't understand this. You start talking about how you're under grace and you're not under law, they get offended. You know, they get upset. Oh, well, you know, as if the Ten Commandments doesn't matter. Well, my friend, I can't fulfill the Ten Commandments. But I can follow the Holy Spirit, who's far superior to the Ten Commandments. So he'll not only fulfill the Ten Commandments as I surrender to him in my life, he'll do far exceedingly and abundantly, above all that I could ask, think, or imagine. This is what the Holy Spirit does. You know, the Holy Spirit can't teach you how to love your wife like Christ loves the church. I mean, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments can't teach you how to love your wife like Christ loved the church. The Holy Spirit can. You know, I mean, so, so the law, the Ten Commandments, is my schoolmaster to bring me to Christ. It's the strength of sin is the law. So it's by the Ten Commandments that I understand that thou shalt not covet, right? Thou shalt not lust, or thou shalt not bear false witness. I shouldn't lie, right? I shouldn't have any other gods before the Lord Jesus Christ. So this, the law is my schoolmaster to bring me to Christ. Well, once I have Christ living in me, right, all of a sudden I have the person of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, to do the work that which I cannot do by mortifying and killing the deeds of the body. You know, and so I don't, I, I, and I, there's, you know, I find a law that when I want to do good, that evil is present. So I have to humble myself. You don't ever want to have the, to have the Lord humble you. If you do, you'll cry. The Lord leaves the responsibility to us humbling ourselves. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he has to flee. And if you humble yourself, right, in due time, the Lord will exalt you. But we don't do it for exaltation. We do it by, for, to experience Christ in us. We do it to experience the freedom, the power, 
of the Holy Spirit. The healing virtue of the Lord Jesus Christ. That gives us angels. Ministering angels. So the sting of death is sin. The strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Oh, beloved, understand this. Your, your labor is never in vain. Your labor is never in vain. But it's about us growing in the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And so as that is being fulfilled by the Word of God, right? He's going to do some things in these last days. He's going to unify the body. This is what He's going to do. And He spoke this to me in 2013 when He came to me. I spent three and a half days with the Lord. I played Monopoly with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And I know that flies in the face of religious tradition. But that's what I'm here to do. Right? And I'm here to tell you in love that Christ is going to be magnified in your body. Whether it be by life or by death. Because He's jealous for you. You know, people, they, they, they honestly, they, they get it. They say, well, Stephen, if what you're saying is true, then... You know, there's been a lot of people that I know that they've been in faith and they died a premature death. So what are you saying? You know, do you have more faith than they do? Well, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Right? And I can't answer for other people in the sense that I don't have all the answers as far as why God does what He does and why certain people die and why certain people live. But I know this. I have a life that I have to live. I have a life that I have to give an account for. And as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have to give an account for you. And whether or not you're going to be in heaven. And I take it seriously. You know, uh, I pray for people like, and I call them forth in the Spirit. The ones that I know. Oh, I'm talking about people like Kim Jong-un. I'm talking about Vladimir Putin. I'm talking about Joe Biden. I'm talking about Kamala Harris. I'm talking about Beyonce. I'm talking about Jay-Z. I'm talking about Kevin Hart. I'm talking about Dane Cook. I'm talking about celebrities, my friend. You know why? Because I'm going to be held accountable at the judgment seat of Christ for how I lived my life and the call and mandate and the stamp and the seal of approval of God on my life. Well, my friend, I don't claim to be worthy of this call. Jesus Christ, blood on the cross, made me worthy. He called me. He's trained me. He's equipped me. And so I'm going to do all that I can to make sure that you're in heaven before I die. And I tell you what, I don't care if you're a Muslim, a Hindu, a Buddhist, a Satanist, a Freemason, an Illuminati, I love you. I don't care if you're a Catholic, Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, Episcopal, Pentecostal, Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, Jehovah's Witness, I love you. And Jesus Christ has called me to you. And there is going to be the coming of the Lord for His saints. And the Antichrist is going to set up His kingdom. And then there's going to be the Lord coming with His saints because it's the saints of God that will judge the world. My friend, we don't judge the world this side of heaven. We judge angels. Because your battle is not with flesh and blood, but with principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. But are you ready to fight? Do you know how to fight? And the only way that you'll know how to fight is by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart and life. Oh, would you do that today? By believing that He died, was buried on the third day, rose victorious over death, hell, and sin. And because of that, my friend, you can live 
immortal, forever, never die, never experience death. And you can be redeemed from the curse. My friend, it's because the first Adam failed, but the second Adam, the man Christ Jesus, was successful. That we would rule and reign as kings and priests with God and queens with God. So my friend, will you receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart in life? Would you follow me as I follow Jesus? And in some of my other teachings, I'd love to walk, walk you through, you know, the the obedience of water immersion, being baptized by water is an act of obedience and expression of your faith, but also the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. My friend, there are baptisms. There's realms of glory you can live in, in the glory and majesty of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, what will you do with this Jesus? I present to you Jesus my friend, you know, there's a song and it says, it is well, right? When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever Now it's taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well. My faith shall be signed, and the clouds be rolled back as a scroll. Oh, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. It is well. friend is it well with your soul today you know I mean hey bad notes and all I'm a little rusty but to God be the glory I pray that that song ministered to you and I pray that this message will minister to you oh and I pray for you my friend if you're a celebrity if you're a president if you're a king of a nation do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. God bless you today.